Dave here. How are you? Today is the 2nd of September in Australia, Australian Eastern Standard Time. I'm hoping the stream's coming through. Uh, if someone can let me know whether it's coming through fine or not, that'd be great. Well, if it's not, obviously, uh, you can't tell me. <laughs> so, if we just have a post there saying, yep, everything's fine. Thank you very much. It's all I needed. Um, again, the new camera. Isn't it great? What a difference. I even did the last video about the um, Aspire software, totally with this little camera. i oh, sorry, with also one of my other cameras for the, uh, for the sound. But this is fantastic. I am loving it. All right, now where are we up to? Today we're going to be doing a few things, and I haven't printed anything out, so I'm going to have to go from memory. We're going to be talking about dado stacks, and I want to... Um, compare the CMT against the Torquetta and I've had a little bit of a play around with them so I've already got a heads up and I'm also going to compare three router cutters. Now this is all about creating a dado or a rebate. Now for people that don't know what a dado is it's basically a slot in some timber or in metal whatever it is but it's a slot that can accommodate another member. It's a kind of a joint. This guy here is a spiral down. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. You may be able to see it. Now, it might just focus on me. So we'll focus on this a little bit later on. And this is a spiral upcut. Now, you might wonder, they're both spiral. What's this spiral down and spiral up? And I'll talk about that a little bit later when I do some comp comparisons. Now, the boards I'm going to do the comparisons in today are some plywood it's going to be quarter inch ply and it's a five ply so the laminations are thinner than one sixteenth of an inch which is you know around just over a millimeter thick each lamination so the reason I'm going to do that is so that we can see any imperfections in the base of the cut that I create with the dado so it'll be good fun obviously my thoughts are I'm going to get the absolute best result from this guy. This is a spiral down cut. And I think that's going to deliver the best result. But nonetheless, uh, now I'm also going to show you this guy. Now, this is for people that have been watching my channel for a long time, they'll realize I did an episode or a series, 30 videos of what's in Arthur's toolbox. And Arthur was my great grandfather, who was a cabinet maker and also a carriage builder for the state New South Railways. And I inherited absolutely all of his tools and this is one of the shoulder planes this is a three-quarter inch shoulder plane and it's very similar to what you would call a Norris shoulder plane except for the Norris has a bump out the front not a rebate there and this is designed to clean the bottom of a dado or a rebate across grain this has got a blade that looks like a low angle when you look at it but it's actually a 45 degree angle and I can tell you that it's a 45 degree because if I put that down there and then this guy gets there and bring it up a little bit closer for you to see you can see that the blade is looking at that stack again move things away I should really put something in the background that it can focus on that's better see that 45 degrees on the bevel on the blade. I'm slowly getting the hang of this new camera. Anyway, Arthur had made these Australian cedar boxes and they've got felt in the bottom of them. And when you put them in, they lock in on purpose. Oh, here's something I didn't realize. When I did the videos about all this, on the back end, I'm going to bring it in nice and close. See that? That screw head is there for a reason. When you change the blade on these guys, you use a hammer and you hit the back. You hit it and it releases the, the wedge and the blade. And it, uh, you don't want the back to be flared out on the brass section because that would interrupt the plane if you're in a very deep dado, wouldn't it? Now, you may wonder also, pardon me, I've just had some soft drink. <laughs> You may also wonder why I'm looking over here a bit and not up at you there. Because 
I have my monitor here now. I'm trying this out. This is something slightly different. So instead of using the screen up there, I'm looking up there all the time, I thought it might be an idea to have this all set up. The camera's sitting up on top of the monitor, so it's very similar to a, um, you know, just a laptop with a, with a webcam in it. But this is a nice big monitor. I can still see what's happening here. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a little bit, a bit of a read down the side here. We will get into things pretty quickly. Uh, Zane watches the big TV, much less pixelated with the new camera. Ben, good evening. Running seamless in Ohio from Stephen Lee, Stuart West. Good morning all. John Lowry, I'm going to the corner. Good. <laughs> Brian, morning all. Terry, greetings from San Diego. Lost Wits, that's a very pretty plane. How about also trying a router plane? Well, have you seen this? This is Arthur's old hag's tooth, or also known as a router plane. I'll bring it up a bit closer. Again, he probably made it. As I say, I have, I've got the full set. This is his big fellow. Look at the size of this guy. Now, I believe that is probably steel, maybe on gunmetal. I thought it was brass to start, but I don't know. But this one is a monster. Uh, I think this one is an inch. Tell a lie, 30, 31 millimeters, just under an inch and a quarter. How amazing is that? These are nice, big, heavy things. I'm, I love them. They're so, so nice. Anyway, what's the next thing we're going to get into? What did I tell you? What did I tell everyone that I was going to do today? Oh, do you like the uh, Vegemite? People are throwing up pictures of what they're using Vegemite on. I thought I'd make a little smiley face with uh, a couple of fried eggs and a bit of med Vegemite for eyebrows and, uh, and a nose. <laughs> we're going silly. Okay, you like the new camera. Thanks, Stephen. Daryl. Uh, 130 and 14. Okay, 130 people watching. That's amazing. We will get into the data stack comparison. I, I promise you. So hang around. I'm doing quick read. Does that mean you will have more to move the monitor when you need to use the table? No. Um, the monitor is not going to live here, Tim. Yeah, I've just sat it here for the moment. Normally lives in the office. Uh, Hi, Dave. I'm viewing from St. Kitts and Nevis, wherever that is. Sorry, Terrence, I don't know. Jim, good day from Melbourne. Oh, sorry, from Monroe, Washington. How did, the, the con how did he connect the edges of boxes? Looks very durable and neat. You know what? Nails and glue. Panel pins and screws up the top. I'll show you the box. I'll show you the box. So, corner of the box. Come in the other way. There, coming closer. Screw at the top, panel pins down the side. Join across the bottom, panel pins again and glue, panel pins, and inside, this is where the screw is. Come on, focus. And the felt down inside. Amazing. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Anyway, put those away. Of course, otherwise we'll just sit here all day. And here's a little one. I love this little guy too. Anyway, that's enough. And the felt bag that the little one lives in. See how old it is and falling apart? Frail as. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. How's the time going? Nearly 10 past already. Um, it dropped to 103.21. First time we've been late ever. Pulled out yesterday. Pay medication. Oh, tooth pulled out. Okay, sorry, Darren. Um, Arthur's tools would have some amazing stories. All right. Love the old tools. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to move the camera around, and we're going to have a little look at everything else that's going on over the other side. I'll get all these cutters without letting them hit their blades against each other, and we'll spin the camera. <sighs> Talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'm going to spin this monitor around this way. Uh, careful, don't get seasick. And you'll see that I have down here the dado stack. Now this is the Torquetta. And what I might do is I might bring the camera in real close and hold it down. So I'm going to use 
melamine and also very, very fine plywood. And I'm going to write down on them what happens. Uh, David Lucy would like to share that I've just come back from a decent country to celebrate my 20th anniversary at local places. Can't wait to go back again. Well, there you go. Uh, happy anniversary, David. Uh, Stephen, your 40th today, is it? Your 40th what, Stephen? <laughs> 40th Father's Day. Uh, happy birthday, Stephen. Yes, I've done a few projects watching Dave too. Uh, new to woodworking, love the videos. Thank you very much. Now, I've got this stick here, which might help us out. This is the stick that I throw the camera on top of. If the camera's cable has got enough length, we should be fine. Hold on a second, I'm going to move the camera. And it may pixelate a little while I'm doing that. Now, is that any easier to see the dado stack? All right. Now, first things first. This stack is fully loaded. Now, I'm going to do, well, I'm not. You, what you guys can do is you can count. You can count how long it takes for that stack to stop. Now, people in, uh, in England aren't allowed to have dado stacks because it takes too long for the saw to stop. I'm going to turn her on and off. Count how long it takes to stop. Still spinning, still spinning, still spinning, still spinning, still spinning, still spinning. Stopped. Okay, that would have been around 20 seconds. There you go. I'm going to bring you down even closer to this stack and we can have a look. Now, what I like about the Torquetta is, and I'll get, I'll get a pencil. If I've got a pencil kicking around, that always makes life a lot easier. First thing I like about it is its metric. All of these internal blades are different thicknesses. You can stack up. Let me just drag this forward a little bit. See this guy here? That's about two millimeters. And you've got all these different width blades in there. So you can arrange your stack in any way you want to get the best result. It all, you can see there, I'll bring it in a little bit closer. that better? Maybe a little bit. Okay, so that blade there is two millimeters wide. Let's just push it back a little. Oh, I'm, very, I'm struggling a little bit to get this part done and see what we've got happening up here. All right, I'll bring it forward a little. There you go. You can see as I'm, as I'm turning you can see all of the blades, are different, all the chippers are different widths. Now each one of these chippers has got four blades on it, so it's very, very well balanced. And right across the center, I've done a little test cut earlier, all of them are dead flat, absolutely dead flat. The outside blades are designed to have a slight peak on them, and the second part, I don't know if you can see it there, the, the second part of that blade is, keep it back there, is flat. So this one's got a peak out this way, and this one has a peak this way. Now, it's only very slight, and you'll be surprised how good it is. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the camera. I'm gonna put a brand new fresh insert in here and raise Raise the whole thing up. Let's see if that'll work. That's not too bad. All right, so this is the new insert. And I put a couple of magnets in there and there. I once show, I call them batteries because <laughs> they look like little batteries, don't they? Anyway, so I'm going to drop the stack down. And because everything's sitting up on top, it's an, I love these inserts. How good is that? And I'm going to show you how to raise 
it up. Now I've, I'm going to do a quick check under there and I'm going to project along to the end of the table here where my blade is. Actually, I might even do that with a little bit of a uh, felt marker, Sharpie, whatever you want to call it. Can you see that? Because now when I put this back in, I know not to bring this past here and not to bring my mag switch on the other side past. I'm going to lock those down. That's so going to hold that side so it can't come up. And I'm going to bring my rip fence over to about there. And it can't come up. Next thing to do is to turn the table saw on and bring this up. Now I've brought it up. This, this is the one that I did with the CMT. And I'm going to bring it up about the same height. Now these things are dead easy for me to make, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm going to have a quick drink that I'm going to play around with a little bit. All right, where are we up to? Other teeth are negative rack. Very close to it, I think. All right, now I'm going to turn the saw on and I'm slowly going to raise it up. And you watch it come up through the... I'm going to support it here as well. I don't really need to, but I will. You can hear it cutting into it now. Making sure it's got plenty of support there. Just about there. Back it off a little. Now you can see straight away, it did a little bit of burning there, but that's to be expected. I'll wait for it to stop. Okay, it's totally stopped under there. Now straight away, you can see how straight that is. Where are we? That's the edge of the cut. On the other side, you can see on the plywood how neat it is. I'm going to try and get it on the camera. So basically all it's focusing on is the bottom. Okay. Now the other side, I'm not overly concerned. This is the side I'm, I'm on about. Now either side here, you will see these nips, whoop, down here. Either side, you'll see these nips. Bring it up so it'll focus. There, it's got it. Now they're there for a purpose. They are designed to give you a super clean entry. Now, the CMT, 
to show you the same side as the, when the CMT did it, turn it around that way. You have those nips, but the bottom of the trench, all the chippers aren't anywhere near as regular. They're all over the place. Now, to some people, that's going to be an issue. That's why they invented shoulder planes. All right, I'm going to put this camera back over here and do a little bit of a read. And we'll tip that back up a touch. All righty, okay. Now, it could be the motor interference. Okay, it's okay, Pichero Eagle has landed. Uh, that's better. Okay, that's the money shot there. Very clean and flat. Dave, slower motion in front of the camera would help in focus. I'm guessing it would. It's very hard for me to actually hold that piece still in front of the camera. It's going. It's, it, it also looks for things further away. See, at the moment, it's focusing on me okay. And it's focusing on... Um, it, these cameras are designed to, to recognize a, a human figure or face and otherwise apart from that it's going to look for high contrast now my shirt against my skin is enough of a high contrast so i'll be focusing on things that are locking in around there uh, a blonde piece of timber like this and i'll try and bring it up again now can you see that cmt versus Torquetta. Now, as I say, they both, they both work. They both work. But you do get people come in and they'll say, I, the bottom of my CMT's data uh, cut is terrible. And the whole thing is, the majority of people, when they do a data, is they will create that dado and then in the, in the larger part of the cabinet and then they'll put a face frame around it and hide it. Now why do I like the C, the, the, why do I prefer the Torquetta over the CMT? The fact that it has all of those adjustable width stacks in the center, all of their stack, and I put the whole lot on, is is, is, is great. It's, it's just one flat surface right across the stack except for the two parts on the edge that are doing the trimming. Um, what is the... Well, you don't want to take the thing up any higher than you need to. It's best to just keep it as low as possible. It depends on the depth... Pardon me. The depth that you want to create the dado. So I would suggest a good size dado would be three sixteenths of an inch, which is probably around about four millimeters. You could probably get away with a little bit less. A lot of people like to use the dado stack for creating box joints. Um, I'm gonna have a quick read here. Um, okay, so when had dado stack and radio alarm saw, a health and safety inspector was okay, but it mentioned table saw, he went mad. Can't understand the difference in both have same dangers. I don't know. Sorry, Lenny, no idea. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stack on and I'm going to drop the height down a little bit of the table saw and run a couple of products over it. So I'll pop, pop that on there. I just want to check inside there because there was a bit of a burning smell. Now it's all good. <laughs> There's no, no flames under there. It's something you want to keep an eye out for. It, uh, it was just burning the tip as it was coming through. I'll move those things out of the way, put that on, raise the stack up to, not too high, about there. That'll be fine, I'm only doing quarter inch. I'll move that out of the way. And I'll bring this over to about there, unlock it and I don't know where, where you guys can watch this best. Possibly, see I'm restricted by the length of the lead on the camera. No, I don't have a sled for doing dados. Um, 
There's a few people on the web do it. I haven't done it yet. Now this could be interesting. If I hook it around the back there, I think I'll be out of harm's way. Bring it back to about there. Do you think that's going to be okay for you guys to watch it from there? It should be about there. I want to make sure I've got enough space for this to pass. It should be fine. All right. First thing we're going to do is turn on the dust extractor. Uh, hi, Dave. Just quick update. I got my source top yesterday. Have to now assemble it. Good on you, Ray. All righty. I'm going to check the depth there. That should be fine. This one is just going to be a pass of melamine over the top because I'm curious to see what kind of chip we're going to get here. And for this one, I will be turning on the dust extractor. And away she goes. And I will be using push blocks because, you know, why not? And I will also throw on my eye muffs. And someone's won a pair of eye muffs this week. How cool is that? Here we go. Alrighty. Around the back there. There and there. Let's have a look. Well, I'll tell you what. That's a pretty decent result. Nice and flat. Hold it steady. Beautiful. I'm going to try it on the plywood. I'll make sure we're not going to come through the ply. That's all good there. I'm going to go across grain on the ply because that's going to try that'll test it even more. Tell you what, how nice is that? All right, I'm going to turn the dusty off. All right, I'm going to do a quick read again. Okay, we put on the eye oh, mask. Uh, is the furthest away part of your fence held in place by the T-track? Sometimes. Nice and flat. I like the flat cut. What about doing a video on the radial arm saw? Uh, nice cross cut. Okay, now guys, I'm going to let you know as well, I didn't buy either of these stacks. I got in touch with Timbercon and I said, look, Wayne Jones has uh, told me that he likes his Torqueta stack, even though it's a different one to this. And so they've sent one to me and I got in touch with CMT a fair while ago and they said, look, we'll send you some things over. And I said, right. So they sent a couple of blades and this stack. So as I say, they're both, they're both being given to me. I don't favor one over the other. There's no reason for me to favor one over the other. So that, just letting you know. Now I'm going to take this stack off, move that out of the way and put the CMT in. I'll raise it all the way up. Now also some other things about stacks. An 8 inch stack on a 10 inch saw is a good idea because that's a nice uh, nice speed. Have you seen me here right? Yep. Okay, if I was to put a 6 inch stack on this saw it would work but because the outside it has, hasn't got the same circumference it's not going to turn as fast 
at the point where it's actually cutting. Do you follow that? And here's something else. I'm going to put the camera down the side here so you can see one of the other crucial things. Okay. Can you see my arbor? You can see the center of my arbor even now is still protruding just through the end of the nut. So, see that? It's, uh, it's one of those things. If you if you're, uh, that's <laughs> convenient for them, wasn't it? I didn't plan that. Uh, your arbor has to be long enough to be able to take a dado stack. You can't just go and grab a dado stack and throw it in. I hope that works. That's the outside. And you set these up as you put them on so that they're all, there's two chippers so that they are all um, stepped apart from each other. See, like that? Otherwise, your carbides are going to be touching each other and it's going to stuff the carbide up. And it's a 159 millimeter arbor, which is 5 eighths of an inch in the center there. A lot of saws have got a 16 millimeter. These will not work on a 16 millimeter. These are 15.9. And see how thin that last one was that I just took off? I'm just going to take them off willy-nilly at the moment. Now the shims that they come with as well, I didn't put any of the shims on this, but the shims that they, they come with are all stainless steel. And uh, they go down to 0 0.05 of a millimetre thick, up to 0.3 of a millimetre. And I think there's two or three of each size. I think that's brilliant. That's, that's that's the other outside. So as I say, I I love the Torquetta. I mentioned the other week or last week that uh, it, it would probably be the one that I prefer. Okay, now we're going to put the CMT on. And I'm not going to put a heap on. I haven't done any reading for a while, guys. These are the shims, and these are a, a plastic shim. So they're all different thicknesses, and they're not labelled. There's no label on it to tell me what thickness they are. Where the Torquetta shims are labelled, which is great. I'll bring them over so you can see them. We're moving on quite well. Do you want me to do something a little bit nice? Saw is totally disabled. How's that crap here? All right, now, see this? It says the size of the shim. 0 0.3, 0 0.1, down to these guys here, which are just insanely thin. Come on, 0 0.05. What do you think? All right, I'm going to pop these away because I don't want to lose them. All right, now we're going to start putting the, we'll put the outside blades on. This comes in two sections. The, the package, oh, goodness. The package for the Torquetta wasn't anywhere near as good as the package for the CMT. Now, that needs to go on first. So this is the first blade. And then I'll get the breakers out, or the chippers. So the packaging is better. a little to there. See here I'm not not letting the carbides touch against each other.
Okay, test one, test one, two. That's not going to be great. I'm going to throw another battery in there, guys. I've got one battery died, and I'm just going to change the other one. You'll go out without sound again. How's that? That should be better for sound. All right, sorry about that, guys. Had a flat battery. Um, hopefully, it's all good again. Good now? Okay. Try and get this happening. I do now. I, d I know now that we've got sound again. All right. I'm um, going to have a quick read. Yeah, it sounds back. That's great. As I say, sorry about that. The um, I normally have fully charged batteries, but I had to do some other stuff for a little while. Sound again. Um, Sign-up movie. That's a while back, isn't it? Okay. Uh, <sighs> How far back did the sound go? How long was I without sound, guys? Let me know. Just right up. Five minutes, ten minutes. I don't. I don't know. Sorry about that. I'm going to check again over here. Yep. Looks like I've got good, strong batteries. Uh, okay. All right. So I've got I've got the stack back on. That was the thinnest blade that I, it has thin blades as well, like the um, like the Torqueta on the chippers. I'm going to lower the stack down and put this in, which is the insert, of course, and bring the insert up to about there. Make sure it's going to pass through okay. Yes, and I can do that because I have disabled the machine over there. All right. Let's put this back up there and we can watch it coming through. Yeah, let me know. How long did we go without sound? Uh, Sound's gone again. You're kidding me. No. Sound has not gone. You still can't hear anything. Well, that's bizarre. Let me have a look. Let me check it again. I think some of you guys are winding me up. <sighs> I hope I haven't lost the camera now. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I thought you might be winding me up. All right, now we're going to get rid of that cable in front of the camera. That looks terrible. And that's not so bad there. Uh, what and why do you use dado and saw over a router table? Well, because, you know, you can. Do we need any more, any more reason? I'm looking at it. Now, this is the CMT stack in here. I'm going to come to about there. Unlock that. And we'll do the melamine pass first. Put the muffs on. I've got to turn the actual machine back on back down here there and there that's all good coming back around this side lost about two minutes is that's all that's nothing yep I I put some Vegemite in there that stuffed everything up did it okay I'm going to turn the dust extractor on and again you guys may want to turn your sound down a little bit And I've got this guy, remember, and I'll write on that Torquetta. And then I'll write CMT. And we can have a look at the comparisons when we're all done. Push blocks. and turn her on.
Here we go. Now, no difference, turn that off, take my eye muffs off, see there they go, okay, I see no difference in the top of the cut from either stack. Okay, so it's the CMT and the Torquetta. Down the bottom, it looks fine. Now the thing is, we'll see the irregularities, and they're only, only minor when I put the plywood over. So this is the plywood. Yep. <coughs> Turn the dusty back on. Right. Turn that off. So there we go. That's this is the CMT, that's the torque header. And you can see down underneath. Got to get it just in the right position to focus. That's pretty good, but not as clean as that one. Both of them are delivering very, very nice crisp edges along the edge. There's no, no difference there. The exits are both fine. Put my hand across here so I can't focus on anything else. All right, so very close, but I, I've got to give it to the Torquetta. You know, they are close, and you saw it was accentuated. It was accentuated on these areas, and you could see you could see the difference. I'll put them side by side, and you might be able to see it a bit better. Torquetta at the bottom. CMT at the top. Without it focusing on anything in the background. Again, I put my hand across there so I can't see anything else. Okay, so that's those two. Now, the question was asked why use a data stack instead of a router table, it's quicker. It's a whole lot quicker. Um, now, the router table, let's do the router table. I shall move a couple of things here and turn the dust extraction off there and turn it on at the router table and put an insert in there so I don't drop things down there. 
done. Now with my router table, I have a situation, I'm hoping I've still got sound. You guys got me panicking now. Yes, I've still got sound, excellent. All right, uh, with the router table, I have, it's gonna end up a cleaner cut. It, that's all there is to it. Um, spin this around, come around your side over here and possibly there and up a little. That should be enough for you guys to see there. <sighs> All right, excellent stream. Nothing wrong with either. Yeah. Uh, channel in the middle of CMT Blade. Yeah. All right. Pick this guy up. And now the router table. I'm going to have a quick chat about this while we're doing this. And I also want to get in and show a couple of couple of things. I'll bring that over. Can you see it still? Good. Uh, I'll raise it up. That's locked. Can't go anywhere. Look, I'm just going to jump straight in with the spiral down because I know that's going to give me the best cut. When you put a router cutter in, don't let it all go all the way down. Just bring it up ever so slightly and lock it. That way we're not transferring the heat from, from the machine to the cutter or vice versa. That's all done. Lower it down. I've got more control about height as well. With this, put the insert in and lock it. Bring this back. Drop it down and get the right depth. So that was that one and also this one. Move those guys out of the way there. Um, push that back a little. That should be enough. And we want it down to the same depth. That's him, got him. Okay, I can take that out, open this up. That's all turned off there. I'm gonna lock the height. That's the only problem with this lift. There's another lift I'm going to have a look at very soon that doesn't have that problem. And I can turn her on underneath. And then get this out of here. Where's my little yellow protector? There you get there. There it is. That was lucky. My router table switch has got this little... Uh, button that goes in down here and without it you can't turn it on so that's in now I can turn it on and it is on I'll get the push blocks and then that'll do us for this part and I'll jump on to uh, some viewer stuff and have a quick read again dust extraction is over there all right This is going to make a bit more noise, noise guys. Do this one first. I'll do the um, plywood as well.
Well, <laughs> that's surprising. That is very surprising. I'm going to turn this up, I'll put this over here again so we can see what's going on. About there. All right, got me. I'm surprised. There you go. The first one, which is this guy here, Torqueta, CMT, spiral down, router cutter. Very, very surprised. Of all of them, and I thought that the router cutter was going to do the best job. It's very hard for me to get this to focus the rotten thing. It's got my beard. There we go. Make your own mind up. Um, on the Melamine, the best was the router. This one. Got to hide myself from this camera. CMT, Torqueta, router table. Well, what do you reckon? Speed of the router was up pretty fast, full speed. Uh, drink. The router table is a, um, oh, sorry, the router is a Trident. Dado is much faster, it is indeed. Uh, more of a mess with the router, speed of the router, yeah, full speed, uh, conceal the fuzz. Yeah, and that is with a spiral down, and that should be pushing it down and cutting the fibers down. If I use the straight cutter, it might've given me a slightly better. Uh, you know, this may have changed my mind. I, th I think the Torqueta stack is the one that I would buy. You know, I'm, not, I'm not showing any favoritism here, as I said. Um, everything except for the router cutters was given to me, like the router cutters and the router, I bought all that stuff. Uh, but those, there you go. A down cutter reduces tear out because it's pressure to cut the fibers against the workpiece. An up cut is useful for pulling the shavings out of a mortise or data. Correct. But that wasn't clear cutting. This is softwood, wasn't hardwood, so softwood tends to collapse under, under a cutter. But, uh, uh, no, spiral, let, me, let me explain what a spiral up and a spiral down are. If I have the router in my hand and then I have the cutter underneath, a spiral up means the cutters are lifting everything up towards the router. A spiral down is pushing it away from the router. So inverted in a router table, a spiral up is pulling the fibers down a spiral down is pushing the fibers up. So when I was using the router table with a spiral down cutter is what I used here. So it was going across the top and it was cutting up into the timber, not pulling the fibers down that way. So that's, that was the best cutter to use in that situation, but it was still furry. I, I love that torque cutter stack. Sorry, I've got to say it. All right, let me have a look here. I'm going to have a quick look here. We're going to come down to Michael Christopher's. Michael, here we go. I'll, I'll grab this as well, throw that up there so I can see what's happening. And we shall do the transition here. I say, Michael has been working in the shed over the last four weeks. In the first project, my grandson's toy box, painted it green as his room is green. My second project got delivered to my son's house to hide an old heater. The top of the cover is floorboards that were glued down. I removed the liquid nails off the back with a hot air gun and 50 millimeter scraper. My son and his wife are painting the lower half. Thank goodness for Craig K4 on pocket projects with a pair of them. So this one here is about the toy box. This is, he's made up all this box here. Uh, final of the toy box. Uh, <laughs> this is like the mismatched paint as it is poster paint and covered with wipe on poly finish. Wait for the next photo. And he says the, uh, 
This is the last image of it. The grandkids are going to sticker over it anyway. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Transition there. All right, what's the next one we're going to have? The next one will be uh, now I like the dado as well. Okay, David, see, you know, both the, both the CMT and the Torqueda will do it. And the CMT does a fine job. There's nothing, as I say, there's nothing wrong with them because once you push your other piece of timber into that dado to create the joint, it, that's that. You know, are you going to use screws on the job or are you going to use nails at all and glue? You're going to have to do some filling there. So these two tiny little cut marks, which are going to give you that super clean edge, that super clean edge just there, which that's the CMT. Bring it up closer so you can see it. Come on, you can do it. Why aren't you focusing? I'm sure it's going to focus. Come on. There, gotcha. See, the edges of the CMT and the Torqueda are identical. It's just the bottom of the trench is cleaner in the Torqueda, and the Torqueda is metric. You know, for me, I want the metric. That's all there is to it. Come on, focus. Put my hand in front of it and pull back. That's got me. This camera is great, but it's got some little quirks I'm going to have to have a look at. Uh, do you know if the Torqueda is sold in the US? Uh, I have no idea, Steve. Probably, probably, though I know that you can get it in Australia. Uh, okay, uh, when daylight savings coming, you're doing to go live 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight. I will still be staying at 11 o'clock Australian time. So uh, let's go to the next one. And the next one is Gary Podger. Here we go. Now, Gary is building a new workshop. And the first photo, this takes a couple of minutes. This is his shed before he started going crazy. So this was just the shed he had in the garden, and now he's converting it to being a woodworking shed. So he's put that stud wall in, and he's going to insulate it. Now, I believe that fiberglass is actually recycled beer bottles. So he's got all the power points there, and the... Uh, the stud wall goes around the corner. He hasn't gone all the way up. He's just doing it for that area at the moment. And then he's sheeted, I think it's with yellow tongue flooring on the walls and two layers, so they take it up to six feet high. And the dust extraction's all going in. He's using PVC pipe and he's anchored it with uh, steel rods up to the top. He thought that'd probably be enough as far as static is concerned, but I've had a little chat to him since. He may change that, I don't know. And the docking station, the, the miter saw docking station is going in. And the dust extractor in the corner. All the drawers for, the, uh, for his station there. And he's making some handles up for the drawers. So he made them all himself out of some pine. All sitting there waiting to get glued up. And here they are all, all uh, glued up and waiting to get the ends cut off some of them. And here's the, uh, the bench, and he's just laid the new flooring. This is recycled rubber matting. How good is that? I, I bought one piece. I've got it under the uh, CNC machine, but he's just gone crazy with it. How nice does this workshop look? Remember the first, the, the first picture? Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? I looked at that and I thought, man, oh man, this guy, imagine living with him. You put a plate down and be straight in the dishwasher. You wouldn't have time to do anything else. I wanted to lick the, the bottom of the bowl. No, sorry. Straighten the dishwasher. There's his lathe. And again, the area with all of that rubber matting. Absolutely beautiful, Gary. It's a credit to you, mate. It really is. And that's the end of the, that little transition through there. What else have we got? I think that's about it. Oh, no, we've got Don Bullock has been watching the show from over in the States with his basset hounds all asleep on the floor. They don't pay as much attention as your dog, Carl. And then we've got uh, Daryl Wells. Uh, he's been watching at work. Naughty boy. <laughs> and Johannes Moa has been watching as well from over, probably out on, a, uh, out on the, a rig out in the middle of the ocean. All right. 
that, I think, boys and girls, is about it for today. Look, today was kind of bogged down in one area, but it's just one of those things that unless you actually see the stuff all um, bang, 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 all in line on the, on the same one, same machine, the same person doing it, you know, you hear about all these people that they become very brand loyal and they say, oh, you've got to get this one, you've got to get this. And I've heard that about Diablo and other, other brands, but you know, CMT and, and Torquetta, good brands. And as I say, the, uh, I, think, I think the Torquetta takes it. For me, I, that would be the way that if I was to actually have to go and buy one, I'd probably do that. Just well, going by the evidence that I've just shown everyone. Anyway, the drawing, Dave, the drawing. Do you want to know who won? Okay, okay. This, I'm glad you guys are here watching because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, we had a lot of, a lot of, uh, I must, okay, yes. <laughs> All right, wait for it, wait for it. We've got to tell you who won. Um, Darren Allen, no, it wasn't you. Uh, thanks, Dave, love the show. Thank you, Darren. Uh, Don Bullock, those are, no, it wasn't you either, Don. Uh, Neil Henderson, no. Uh, John Everett, no. Michael Christophers, even though you sent pictures in of your toy box, no. Uh, James Gorman, these are awesome. I definitely want one. Unlucky. Uh, I always watch the show at 2 a.m. here in the UK. Thanks, Stuart West. Uh, we're going through, there's a whole heap of entries, but the person who won it, is Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen, uh, I will get in touch with you, buddy, uh, regarding the IMFs, and he says that he's in Australia, so that means that there shouldn't be any hassle with import tax or anything like that, and it'll be out the door to you as soon as you want. I will ask you what color you want. These are mine, which have got the um, fluorescent green, and I quite like those. They're very handy, and uh, there you go. That's that's it for another week. I, I hope you like the show. Oh, sorry, the video I did on the parrots. Uh, you know, it's just part of my life. I do this kind of stuff. I'm sharing. It's not just woodwork. I share my experiences as well. And uh, you know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, well, there's there's other channels out there as well. And talking about other channels, jump over to my other channel and uh, subscribe to it. I'm up to nearly 400 subscribers. I want to get it to a thousand at least. So, and that's where I store all of the shows. This show, this, this comparison of the dado stacks will be moved off this channel at the end of this week over to that one. So that is a good reason for you to do that. So if you want to show someone else, just say, look, register, subscribe to his other channel and you'll see everything that's happened. All right, where are we up to? Uh, Dave, Lucy, thanks for the great effort. Have a great week. Uh, Daryl, great video as usual. Thank you, Jay Parra. All the best. Thanks, Dave. Great show. Please click like if you haven't. 111.72. First time watched live. Great show. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Brian, great show. Thanks, mate. Zane, have a great Father's Day. Yeah, Father's Day. How cool is that? I, I, you know, the poor old kids, they're all parents as well. So, you know, I, I understand if they're all hanging out and I get a phone call tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> That'd be fine. Next time, don't forget the thumbs up. That's great. All right. I shall see everyone next week. Hopefully. Bye.